consultant and gynecologist and uh, endometriosis specialist at the uh, City Hospital. He's going to be talking to us about scanning in endometriosis. Why endometriosis? Why scanning in endometriosis? Endometriosis, we know 10% of the women has it. We know that uh, delay in diagnosis. Now is recommended uh, by NICE, RCOG, ESHRE, BSGE, um, Radiology Society in the USA. So everybody is recommending the utilization of specialized ultrasound scan to, to assess uh, endometriosis is non-invasive, is accessible, cost-effective, and standardized uh, utilizing the IDEA protocol or IDEA consensus, and um, allow us to use hashtag Ensian in preoperative assessment, which links with uh, MDT accreditation BSGE. So nice uh, check about the accuracy in the diagnosis. And if we, if we see, it, it, it's pretty good in ruling out, it's reasonably good in ruling in. We know endometriomas, rectosigmoid uh, deep infiltrated endometriosis. First 10, 12 centimeters further uh, is more difficult to assess. Rectovaginal septum, I'm not quite clear why there is that variability. We found quite easy to assess the rectovaginal septum uh, with ultrasound scan. Uterus sacrum ligament can be a bit tricky to assess. Bladder can be a bit tricky to assess. Um, this is not nice evaluated, but uh, there is kind of consensus that ultrasound scan is not good for assessing uh, superficial endometriosis. It's quite difficult. Some people who develop great expertise can see little notches, little bubbles, little retraction in the, in the peritoneum. And the idea consensus, this QR code at the top will uh, take you to Susan Johnson explanation of how, how, to, how to do an, an, an idea ultrasound scan or an idea based ultrasound scan. She is Fantastic. Uh, we look for endometrioma, we look for signs of adenomyosis, then we look at the rectovaginal septum, we can assess uh, uh, the likelihood of this patient having or not having deep infiltrated endometriosis. And, and it's very good and it's very effective and it's reproducible. This is the, the MUSA criteria. Again, I put there uh, Susan QR, QR code. If any one of you wants to watch, it's a short video, uh, very easy to, to understand. And, um, you know, this is another elephant in the room. Adenomyosis very commonly gets overlooked. Um, it's a tricky one because it's, uh, at least in my clinic, very overrepresented. Um, and we believe that probably one in five women may have adenomyosis. So you have it, that doesn't mean it's the, it's the problem. But this is the criteria that we can objectively assess and say, well, you have adenomyosis. Um, here you have a patient with antivertebral retroflex uterus, heterogeneous myometrium with heterogenic islands with asymmetry. Um, and it should be some fun shade of shadows, but this scan didn't show them. This is another scan with a little rectal nodule and a longer rectal nodule. Um, I've been running for a few years now a dedicated ultrasound scan pelvic pain clinic and um, recently looked at uh, six months, 99 um, transvaginal ultrasound scans and I found, as I say, a big overrepresentation of uh, adenomyosis. 62 of my patients had them, um, 20 were completely asymptomatic, which is far less than what normal population is, only 20% symptomatic here is inverse. Found ovarian C's, look at the reduced mobility, and um, some nodules in the torus, some obliterated pouch of Douglas, some deep infiltrated endometriosis. So, We've been using it um, 
And we found it very useful because if there is no deep infiltrated endometriosis, there is most of the time no need to organize an MRI. There is uh, most of the time no need to organize an MDT to treat these patients. Yeah. So we also look on cases with superficial endometriosis. We base the diagnosis in well, suspicion diagnosis, right? Obviously, we have a very biased population because there are patients with chronic pelvic pain. They all have failed of treatment. And then we do the ultrasound scan. We found localized tenderness. And um, so we look retrospectively. A patient who had peritonectomy, we look at the histology. It confirmed endometriosis. We look at the scan, and we found that... Um, in our case, most of them had, um, had um, signs of localized tenderness or a little bit of reduced mobility. So in our population, we find that although the evidence suggests that you cannot diagnose superficial endometriosis or scan is not reliable, when we mix the history, the examination and the scan, we, we can um, have an educated guess that's quite accurate. Then when we look at, at adenomyosis, um, again, we look retrospectively, ladies, that we did hysterectomies um, for pelvic pain without deep infiltrated endometriosis. The histology confirmed adenomyosis. We look at the scan. The scan had 100% concordance with the histology. Um, outcomes... Uh, we have 90% of improvement. So, again, you don't treat the adenomyosis on the scan. You treat the patient. But when you look, the scan is a very useful tool to say, okay, I have a high clinical suspicion of adenomyosis. The ultrasound scan confirm adenomyosis. The histology confirm these patients will probably get better with the hysterectomy. I'm not proposing that we should be removing every uterus, but I'm saying it's a very useful tool to confirm what we suspect. Um, regarding ultrasound scan and, and the learning curve, which is the challenge that is coming to, to the endometriosis centers and, and gynecology in general, so the RCOG curriculum, intermediate level, um, it says it takes around one year and 50, around 50 scanning clinics, which could be 200, 250 cases to, to learn to do this intermediate scanning. On the top of that, the learning of IDEA, it takes, let's say, another 40, 50 cases. Yeah? It's been demonstrated that um, simulation will shorten the, the learning curve so, um, I mean, um, we know Miski here, my fellow, she, her learning curve was far, far shorter. She spent 10 hours in the simulator. Um, she did 50 patients with various settings and then um, around 100 cases in the endometriosis cl uh, scanning clinic. I think it, this shows the value of having a dedicated clinic because in this clinic we are seeing patients with chronic pelvic pain that most of them have a finding that supports the learning curve, the learning curve gets uh, shortened, uh, which is something to bear in mind when you're trying to set up how to train a cohort of, 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 of surgeons or future surgeons in endometriosis, how to learn scanning. So creating these dedicated scanning clinics with pelvic pain, I think, would be an effective method to shorten the learning curve. So, again, the ultrasound scan is, is a tool. We, for us, it's a tool to, to screen uh, and stratify these patients. Yeah? If they have suspicious, if we suspect superficial peritoneal endometriosis, these patients can be managed by a general gynecologist who is happy to do a helica, do an ablation, provided the spread trial suggests that is of any value to, 
to treat this superficial endometriosis. And when we audit it, we have very disappointed outcomes from surgery. So I became a bit aseptic about treating superficial endometriosis. Um, for adenomyosis, uh, we, we found that there is a good concordance. Uh, when we don't find deep infantile endometriosis, as a rule of thumb, we don't need to involve the MDT. Uh, when there is thickened peritoneum or uterus sacrum ligament, if the rectum is not involved, again, I don't get involved the MDT and um, don't do an MRI. When I find a frozen pelvis, Without endometriosis, well, sometimes MRI, sometimes MDT, depending what was the cause of the frozen pelvic, right? Previous surgeries, uh, two ovarian abscess, that stuff. And if we have bowel or bladder deep infected endometriosis, then those patients go to MRI and MDT, which is probably 15% of our population in, in the scanning clinic. Um, the hashtag ancien, well, the benefits um, can be utilized in ultrasound scanning, MRI, and surgical findings. It's been demonstrated in large uh, multicenter studies, and it facilitates the communication between sonographers and, and radiologists and um, gynecologists and all the team. So it's been already shown, hashtag ancient. So the... the Criteria for the endocenter, I think John already mentioned them. And um, it's, it's very interesting, this new, the ultrasounds can lead, uh, that might be a gynecologist, radiologist, and radiographer. So that brings, again, the challenge of having to train more people to do this type of ultrasound scan. And uh, how do we incorporate its benefits in clinical practice. So in conclusion, I think there is a great value of using a ultrasound scan in endometriosis center. Uh, that's been clearly uh, supported by, by all the other studies in the diagnosis of deep infiltrated. Um, it's a must for the new endometriosis center. Uh, the role of the lead uh, in ultrasound scan, I think it probably is to be clarified. Um, and yeah, some training challenges are ahead. And the top two QR codes are Susan Johnson. The middle is Kekstein explaining uh, hashtag Ancien. And the other two are Miski and I doing different presentations about our scanning in our unit. Thank you very much. Do you use, we all know the importance of transvaginal yeah. ultrasound for the detection of endometriosis. Do you use it as a triage uh, test or as a follow-up tool? There's been an interesting uh, study by Matthew Leonardi saying that actually you can teach all sonographers to do the initial assessment. Yeah, that's the idea. You know, they do the initial triage and then if the system works well, I, get, I should get to re-scan the most complex ones because also it's useful pre-surgically. So we have created in our electronic patient record, when you request, you can request, and we call it endometriosis scan. But really, if you have a patient with pelvic pain and you want to be scanned with, on, the, on the basis of the idea uh, consensus, you request this scan and you get that. The sliding signs, Assessing for deep infiltrated endometriosis, assessing for, for adenomyosis. Thank you.